Good morning, everyone. Hello, good morning. I thought I would start a little bit early to hang out because there's so many people already in the waiting room. Good morning, hi Chris from Newfoundland, Dawson. Let me know guys in the comments where you are from. Erin from Ontario, where you're from, city, province, state, if you were here on Monday or if this is your first day. Yeah, Chris is here from St. John's. Hopefully some of that snow has melted from the snowmageddon you had back in uh, late February. El Monte, so LA, California. 15 more last night, oh my goodness. Well, maybe Chris, did you see the meme online? We had this uh, near Alberta, uh, God made it snow or the government made it snow so that we know when you leave your house, right? It, you're not self-isolating. PEI, PEI is back, Ingersoll, I know where that is now. Maryland, hi Angela, my husband's from Hagerstown, he's up in Canada now. Uh, Caste, California, yeah. Uh, BC, where, Dawson, where are you from in BC? Gibson, I'm gonna have to pull up a map and do my geography, not so good with that. We've got a whole bunch of other people on the line. Nobody wants to say where they're from, but if you're just joining us, let us know where you're from. Jasper, Jasper, Alberta, love Jasper. I just actually got an email from someone in Jasper this morning. Jasper Aquatic Center, you guys have the, the slide. You have two, two slides, I think. I'm just trying to picture you, the wood paneling and then the kind of the slide that comes in the middle and then the to the right. Hagerstill, Ontario, Prince George County, Maryland, lots of Maryland. I'm
scrolling. I see some names from my, how's everybody doing? practice. We started the room instead of we can decide it. So, come on, if you do handle our presentation, and summer programming, getting every employee handbooks, college staff are one of the pools. So, when does your summer programming start? Is it at the end of the at the college university term, like May, June, or is that be more July, August after Independence Day? You've just come in. Hi, Marilyn from Owen Sound. Very sorry to hear that. Uh, it's a tough one. It's. I got an email from a client this morning I've worked with for a couple of years. He is the maintenance director for seven hotels and he's being laid off at the end of this week. And so, uh, I mean, if he's considered inessential, unessential, I can only imagine everywhere in between. That's so tough. So if you've just joined us, let us know where you're from. Uh, let us know what you're up to today. You know, any plans? Are you working? Are you Netflixing? I could do with some new Netflix recommendations. Everything I have on my list is too serious. I'm usually into documentaries and uh, crime, and that's just, that's not the mood I want to be in right now. I prefer kind of like fluffy, distracting. So Angela's hoping for May, June. Um, Okay, so Alberta's working on the above. So a lot of planning to resume, maintenance and thorough detailing. Deep cleaning is so nice. Lots of people typing here. Also put up maybe the whiteboard. So you guys, if anybody wants to draw on that, we can try that today. I don't know if it'll let me, maybe it won't let me. <laughs> I don't think I can collaborate with you guys. Turks and Caicos. Turks and Caicos, what, where in the Turks and Caicos? Did Mark connect you? Or are you at beaches or where in Turks and Caicos? Maybe I can't do the collaborate right now. Penticton, you're working on your shutdown. Hi, Jane. Okay, so uh, how do you say your name? Is it Tasmara? Uh, Provo, okay, so Mark connected you. Yeah, Mark's gonna be, uh, I, I know Mark's coming up here next. Okay, learn to swim programs, that's super exciting. Do you do it in the ocean or do you do it in um, uh, in hotel pools? Oh, exciting, that would be amazing. Okay. So we're expecting a big group today. We've been practicing the tech issues. So I know on Monday, if you were here, we had some challenges with the sharing for group participants, uh, anybody attendees that wanted to share. And so we've practiced that and worked through it and figured out um, the issue that I wasn't aware of as a host is that I would turn on the audio, but we didn't realize that the attendee side, there's a double safety. And so the attendee also has to turn on the audio and the mic, or excuse me, the camera and the audio. So we're not gonna be doing any uh, group sharing at this point in the conversation. At the end, if Christian is available, we'll take some questions. We'll definitely take questions through the group chat and our moderators are going to help with that. Uh, throughout the talk, if you need a question or something defined or you're not familiar with the terms being used, we do have a bunch of moderators helping out today in the chat box for a large group. But at the end, if we have time, Christian will take maybe some uh, audio questions or if not, I'm thinking this weekend, I don't know what you guys, your thoughts are, but I was thinking maybe on Saturday of doing just like an informal webinar, like putting up a link and letting anybody come and share. Now that I've got the audio figured out, I will also put together a blog post with all of the screenshots of how to make sure your audio is working, because I know that's the other piece that people don't like is uh, they can't can't expect they don't know what to expect with the pop-up windows so I'll work on that and then if there's any interest on Saturday just doing kind of an informal show up and chat you know maybe 9 or 10 a.m. mountain um, we'll have that on our Facebook page but Baylor is here again so a couple of people from Texas I don't know if you guys saw the map the show notes I did from Monday I'll pop that in the chat box I gave me a map of where everybody was from one moment let me share that
Canmore, Shandy. Hello, Shandy. I always think of you as Shauna's friend. <laughs> Hello. Um, <laughs> I know, but I mean, you're your own person. You're not just Shauna's friend, Shandy. You're Shandy. Uh, so the link I just put in the chat box is the uh, show notes from Monday. So you can go to that link. It is live. If you missed the recording on Monday on YouTube, you can find it with the detailed show notes, all of the resources for everything we talked about. If you were on the chat on Monday and you want to add something to the show notes, feel free to shoot me an email. Uh, it's katie at lakeviewaquaticconsultants.com. I'm going to put that in the chat box right now. Or you can use the contact form under on our website. Consultants.com. So if you have anything you want to add to the, um, the resource list on that show notes page for Monday, and then the plan today is the same thing. So I'm currently recording this session. Nobody's late. We're just recording as people come into the room because I'm, I'm not busy. Most of you, it seems like you've got a few minutes free, so to share. And then I will uh, give you the link to the show notes at the end of this episode. And it's not fully fleshed out yet, but I've started to stage it with a lot of the resources that Christian's going to be using that are available from the Canadian Red Cross website. And so you can look for a full YouTube upload of this webinar broadcast, um, hopefully by the end of the day tomorrow, Thursday. I can't guarantee it any sooner. The internet, as you can imagine, has been really squeezed with everybody um, at home using the internet. So it took probably almost an hour to download the original recording from Monday, which was 97 minutes, maybe. And so same thing to upload it to YouTube. Hello, Cheryl Ann, nice to see you. I know Megan was confused yesterday about uh, what had happened. And I was saying earlier that either the software sent out a you've missed the webinar uh, email uh, when nobody had in fact missed the webinar, or there was an issue where uh, one of our presenters was logging into practice and that made it, uh, that started the webinar that you're currently in. And then when they exited, it made people think that they had missed it. So um, yeah, so, uh, but, the show notes will be available at the end of the session. Anybody who has to leave early, you can look for those show notes tomorrow as well as the recording. Um, the software that we're using, Click Meeting, has been really, really great, all things considered, that the whole entire world now is doing online meetings and webinars. So I appreciate your patience with any glitches that we have. Anytime. Um, so Paula, the show notes are above. If you scroll up in the chat, uh, I don't know, could somebody let me know when you enter late, can you see our earlier chat or do you only have access from the point at which you enter? So Paula, the show notes are live uh, already from Monday. So Andrea, okay, so you can see earlier. So Paula, if you scroll up, scroll up, you will see the show notes from Monday as well as the YouTube recording. And then at the end of today's webinar, I will publish what is already staged as the show notes for today. It's not complete, but uh, you can go to that link and send it to any friends and it's live forever in perpetuity. I'm not planning to take it down, but that link is static. YouTube, there is a YouTube link as well. So does that answer your question? And I meant to put a little dot. I keep looking at the chat box and not the camera. So bear with me. Hello, Noreen from Ottawa. I grew up in Ottawa. I don't know if you know that. So I grew up in uh, Alta Vista and I went to the University of Toronto and then I uh, moved out to Alberta about eight years ago. So have a love for Ottawa. Ottawa, if you guys don't know from the United States, it's the capital of Canada. A lot of people think that Toronto is the capital because it's a really big city and it's very famous because we have Drake and all these other people from Toronto. But Ottawa is the nation's capital. It's, it's on the edge of Ontario, the St. Lawrence River near Quebec. And it was selected by Queen Victoria 150 years ago to be our capital, nation's capital. And uh, yeah, that's where Trudeau lives. That's where Noreen lives. That's where I grew up for the first 18 years. I still go back there two or three times a year to teach. So really, really thrilled. <laughs> Drake, <laughs> Drake, Chicago is here. Hello, Chicago. Lots of friends from Chicago. Never been though. Hello, Kate from Dublin. Ola from LA, oh, Ola County, my apologies, LA. 
So if you're just joining us, let us know where you're from. Niagara, Ontario, College Station. I have a friend who went to uh, college in College Station. Kansas City, Fredericton. Hannah from Montana, we're neighbors, basically. I'm up in Alberta. Uh, Fort Worth, Texas, Vancouver. How's the weather in BC? Is it warmer than Alberta? Probably, right? You're probably into spring. Charlottesville, Virginia. Other thing I brought you guys to show you, uh, this is really cool. Uh, Katie's from Ottawa here too. So I brought this to show you guys. This is a headband from Rishona. So Rishona is going to be presenting. Oh, sorry. Rishona is going to be presenting on Monday, and her swimmers from Aqua Essence Swim Academy. I'm blocking. Sorry, clearly not very skilled at figuring out which way to go. Um, so. Rishona provides these to her swimmers at Aqua Essence uh, Swim Academy and the significance, she just sent this to me, she's presenting on Monday, which is awesome, but I wanted to show you ladies who have hair, especially short hair, you know what it's like when you're in the pool, you're teaching lessons and the struggle is real because you only brought one bobby pin and you have all these like strangles falling around from your bun or your ponytail. Um, so this is amazing. They use crushed velvet on the inside of the headband so the outside is your regular ribbon. They've lined the inside with crushed velvet so that it holds the hair. And then it's got the extension on the back, which is amazing. So I just thought this was genius because how many times have you, if you're female, you've had your hair kind of just all over the place and not easy to manage. So we've got Maine Medicine Hat. Hello, Elsie. Uh, Rain in BC. Oceanside, California, probably somewhere on the ocean. Welcome. If you're just joining us, pop your name in the box or where you're from. Let us know. Um, so Sheena, they actually, I believe they make them themselves. So I believe Rishona's brother uh, or husband is involved in wholesale manufacturing of clothing. So I can definitely put the link uh, for the item and then you can contact Rishona and ask her where they if where they get them made i believe it's her husband though or her brother whose company makes them one second let me see grab a link so uh the company that the swim company is called aqua essence swim academy it's owned by rishona hyman she will be speaking on monday about programming and then the uh the headband one second headband uh, they sell them as well to their swimmers or they provide them but you could chat with her and see who makes their headbands because i've never seen anything like i said with the crushed velvet i thought that was genius because it's even the, the under armor ones the stretchy tensile or the goody hair ones they hold until they wear out right we've all experienced they get out. So Edmonston is back. Hello, Edmonston. Wyoming. I don't know if we had Wyoming before. PEI, more PEI. Hi, Renee from Calgary. We've got Marcy. Hello, Marty. Uh, who else? We've got um, Washington State, Arlington, Virginia. Been to Arlington, Virginia. Was just there in May. My husband was at Arlington. Uh, he was stationed there for six years. Edmonston, Coronado, California. Um, so Wendy, if you can't hear me, I'll put this in the chat box. If you can't hear, if you can't hear me, check your audio. Uh, Rapid City, South Dakota. I don't know if we had South Dakota before. Sylvan Lake is here, Ohio. Ohio. So we've got Idaho, more Chicago, Denison, Texas, North Bend, Washington. Sorry, I just wanted to make sure I have my phone on silent, but I'm seeing, seeing what's going on. Jasper, more from Jasper, lots of people from Jasper. Michigan, I'm just scrolling up. Uh, JCC Austin, uh, University of Memphis in Tennessee. Gretna, hello Gretna, you're back. Uh, 
uh, Allentown, Pennsylvania, West Hollywood. A <laughs> couple more minutes. We're going to give everyone a couple minutes, Dawson. I'm just checking up on Christian. So don't hold your horses. We're, we'll definitely start on time, but we're going to give people just a couple minutes. Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, Nanaimo. So Nanaimo, love a Nanaimo bar. So those of you Americans don't know Nanaimo, BC, well known in Canada for something called the Nanaimo bar, which is basically like a macaroon brownie with a buttercream and then a chocolate temper. Liz, you have a question. Let's try this. Liz, I'm going to authorize your audio if you want to ask a question. I'm going to shut this off. Liz, can you hear us or no? You got to authorize your audio, Liz, if you want to try to chat. We've got Georgetown, Texas. Hello, Paige, another Nanaimoite, Mexico City, awesome. So we've now hit uh, the whole North American continent. Chandler's here from Arizona, or sorry, Jessica's here from Chandler, Arizona. Liz, if you wanna try and talk, I did authorize your mic, but you need to authorize your mic as well. So you would need to put your mouse over the, um, over the video box and then it would pop up. We've got Las Vegas, Half Moon Bay. Kimiko's here. Katie from Tilsonburg. I swear there's so many Katies in aquatics I'm discovering this week. <laughs> Roberts Creek, BC. Yeah, it is the best name. Although, are you a Katie or are you a Catherine? Because I'm just a Katie. I don't know what uh, what happened there. Uh, Medicine Hat, Catherine. Ah, okay. Well, I'm a Katie, which I won't hold that against you. But we've got there. We go, Christian. Perfect. Whew. All right, so we're going to get started in one or two minutes. I'll just give you guys a two-minute warning. While uh, Christian, uh, I'm going to I'll close the. Can you hear I'll, me? Yeah, we can hear you. Do you want me to turn off the the whiteboard, or do you want it on? Um. Okay. This is <laughs> that's. Thank you. <laughs> okay, well, let me. <laughs> No, that's okay. You're here. That's all that matters. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to close the whiteboard so Christian can get organized and we'll get started in one or two minutes. So just uh, you guys who are just joining in, uh, we're going to get started momentarily. I will introduce Christian and then I will be going into just a uh, voice mode so that you can't see me. So we're going to try and save some bandwidth for everything. Okay, we've got Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, San Diego, California. Uh, Gretna, oh, Gretna saying lots of Katie's and Catherine's. <laughs> yes, yeah, so Gretna, you should see my phone. It starts out as Katie C, Katie T, and then we had Katie Cleese be on Monday, right? So now I have a, another Katie C. Usually it's Katie T, Katie Short, right? Katie Mayer, uh, Louisville, Colorado. I am also just a Katie. So um, yeah, all right. So how's everyone doing today? We're good, we're ready for a webinar. Sounds good. Well, we have a huge group today, so welcome. Thank you guys, whether you're here because of the Association of Aquatic Professionals email this morning, or whether you're here from the Texas Recreation and Park Society, or we've also picked up two other organizations in the last day that are going to be issuing CEUs, which is the Illinois Parks and Recreation Association, as well as the Kentucky Parks and Recreation Society. So just wanna make sure everybody knows um, all of these webinars are free. Please tell your friends they're free. There is no fee, there is no hidden charge, totally free. This is my service to the community, bringing these people together. Um, everybody that I've selected for the webinars, so you know, I have a personal connection to them whether I've met them in person or not, 
Uh, so somebody like Christian, we haven't met in person, but I got connected with Christian through the psychological first aid instructor group on Facebook. And he's super active in that group. Don't worry, I'll link to that group for those of you PFAIs in Canada. And it's a great networking opportunity to be able to um, connect. And yes, I see Corey, you're asking about Maryland Parks and Rec. I am happy to work with any organization that wants to provide CEUs. The big thing you guys need to understand is I will not be charging, but they may charge. I'm happy to help with the paperwork for their, their accreditation. Connect them to me, katie at lakeviewaquaticconsultants.com. My email is further up or uh, Jessica's also on the chat. She may be able to help. She's from Texas Parks and Rec. She has done all of the work, getting all of the information into a spreadsheet that we can share with you in terms of learning objectives, outcomes, et cetera. Okay, so Paul is saying it's hard to hear from me. Hello, Erin. Okay, everybody else can hear me okay. I'll try and move a little bit closer, but we're also gonna pass it over to Christian. Okay, and then Jessica's also stated in the chat box that um, TRAPS members will get CEUs through the link that she's provided. Uh, so I can't hear anybody else. You should only be hearing me and then maybe Christian. Can, okay. can everybody, can you hear me? We're still yeah, good? Go you should check. Okay, so I'm going to finish up by introducing Christian. I'm going to pass it over to him. I will turn my video off. But I just want to welcome Christian Clavel, so from Canadian First Aid Training Limited in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. He is a psychological first aid instructor and trainer with the Canadian Red Cross. And so today he's going to be doing a self-empowerment session with tips and strategies that you can implement to assist your families, your friends, your colleagues in this time of crisis. Um, and as I was saying before, I got connected with Christian through the Facebook group that he's very, very active in. He's been a great resource to me as I've been on my journey as a new psychological first aid instructor and really kind of understanding more about this. So I'm going to sign off and say welcome to Christian, please. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I uh, really appreciate it, Katie. And uh, this is my second webinar uh, doing this. Uh, this is a back to back. I, uh, I know that there'll be a few things I will be changing for this, uh, this uh, attempt at providing some information on this program. And again, Katie, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, so I'm going to try to test uh, just to make sure that in terms of the chat that everything is working and that we have uh, a good feel for this. And uh, I, I feel like I have a good handle on this. but. Uh, I'm pretty sure everybody can see the uh, the slideshow. And so we're gonna kind of use that. I don't wanna do any death by PowerPoint. I might skip ahead on a few slides just because. Um, but, uh, oops, somebody said that they cannot hear me. So that might be because uh, your audio is off. You should look for a little microphone somewhere and turn the thing on. It should be green. And uh, we'll just hopefully that, try, that helps. Um, just for those who can actually hear me, uh, we have 170 people here, so um, I need something. This is crucially important to this info session. I need your favorite color, but what I really need to know is the person who has the most, you know, unique color that they like, their favorite color, they get some points. Okay, we're going to give you points. Um, so start throwing it. We have mauve, purple, turquoise. I want something really per periwinkle green, excellent, emerald, maroon. Throw it at me. Give me the good stuff. Uh, magenta, hot pink. We've got aquamarine. Um, I had a 1992 Chevy Beretta. And when you open the door, it actually said quasar blue. So that's my favorite color. Quasar blue, lime green, turquoise. Excellent. Uptown tangerine. <laughs> Excellent. You win, I think. So um, another question here is favorite movie. Um I need a favorite movie from you. Let's just make sure this chat's really working up here. Let's get everybody involved. Um, I saw Ford versus Ferrari the other day. Amazing. Please go see Dumb and Dumber. I love it. <laughs> yeah, good. Billy Madison, especially in this new time and era that we're in here. These movies, I think, will give people ideas on what to do tonight here on Netflix. Good. Excellent. Okay. Um, so... Basically, uh, this this webinar is meant to provide a little bit of insight into some of the programming. My understanding, there are some PFA or psychological first aid instructors that are on. So thank you for being here. 
And uh, there are some psychological first aid instructor trainers, so people that actually teach people to become instructors. So uh, the pressure's on. Uh, we'll, I'll do my best here. Um, now, in talking to Katie, the, uh, the intent of this info session was to provide um, a little bit of guidance in these kind of new and interesting times. Um, my, my goal here is to not actually sell the program. My, my job is to maybe provide some of the guidance that this two-day course can provide. There's also a different variant where you can do a couple of online courses. And if you, if you achieve the uh, care, if you complete the caring for self and caring for other, uh, caring for others, um, uh, online courses, it'll allow you to do the blended course in one day. So, um, there are a lot of nuggets here. I'm going to, I called this an empowerment session because ultimately after today, you're not going to get a, uh, a certification. So that's, that's just the one thing. Um, I'm going to do my best to provide some nuggets. Uh, there's another person in the room here. Um, his name is Craig Bremner. Um, he's a psychological first aid instructor trainer as well. So he's taking notes and he's going to make sure that he keeps me um, on task. Okay. So that's, uh, that's who we have in the room here. Um, I'll, I'll just explain who I am a little bit because I think it'll provide some context and to um, how this program in and of itself has helped me. Um, a couple of years ago, I was brought on board uh, from, um, you know, with some of the power that be um, when they decided to come up with this, uh, this course, the Psychological First Aid course. Uh, Don Marinette, he's a national program representative at the Canadian Red Cross, amongst some others. Um, had asked if I was interested in kind of uh, taking part in like a phase one, phase two, phase three of the development of this program. Uh, they had um, known that uh, on the personal front, I had gone through a few different uh, uh, pretty, you know, I'll, I'll just say them pretty serious traumatic situations personally. And uh, felt that if uh, maybe some involvement might give some perspective on the, um, the relevance of the material in the program. So... Um, about three years ago, um, I, I had a younger sibling pass away and uh, she had decided that uh, she didn't want to be around anymore. Now, I always counted myself lucky that uh, when it comes to mental health, I was uh, kind of fortunate. Um, there are some or those that are, you know, if, if uh, they're, you know, on my mom's side, you know, uh, depression, um, uh, you know, some of the people that, uh, that in my family have, are on medications and, and that's just a way of life. And a great many Canadians live with, uh, with all different types of mental health, wellness and well-being stuff that they have to manage. On the other side for myself, I always felt that I was, you know, great. I, I, I was fortunate. I, I, I was able to, you know, muck it out. I was resilient. I had a lot of uh, tools in my, in my mental tickle trunk and I was able to manage. When the loss of my sister happened, um, it completely uh, discombobulated me. It, um, I'm a business owner. I had a young family at the time. Uh, you know, I have a five and seven year old now, but at the time uh, they were quite young and, uh, you know, managing, you know, organizing the, the, the funeral, uh, being a father, trying to be a business owner, um, it, it, it affected me significantly. That lasted for six, eight months, um, took its toll on me, developed high blood pressure out of the whole equation. And, um, you know, when the program was coming up and, and, and it was being formulated, it was brought on and, and t because it was simply put, could it work or help or, or be of use for somebody who would maybe like me, you know, somebody that had gone through the ringer and, you know, it, it, it did help. Um, I had a, a bunch of uh, great conversations, met with great people, and the, 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 the putting together of this program is, uh, you know, uh, I, I say it's my baby because I believe it, that it works. And for those who in any way, shape or form have mental health, wellness and well-being on their mind may get a net benefit from it. Um, a year after the loss of my first sister, um, I lost my second sister. Um, to say that I, I bring these up um, lightly is I don't. I don't share it with everyone. Where I feel that the net benefit of saying that is that some of the tools um, the, that, that came about with the uh, psychological first aid courts continue to this day to help me. Self-care, taking care of myself, looking, being aware that this is affecting me. What do I need to do? Self-care plan. 
those types of things are what we're going to discuss today. And I want to try to, you know, if there's anything that I can, that I can come across is, is that um, if there's any way that I can help you, um, I'd be interested in providing resources and in talking to Katie there, she has a great way to uh, provide all the insight, um, slides, documents, links. I'm going to everything that you find here and we're going to see how this goes. Is that okay, Katie? Yeah. Oh, there, Katie, excellent. Okay. I so uh, head go ahead. we will get French resources. I will work with the Red Cross and we'll get what we can in bilingual yeah. versions. And I'm fully bilingual, Katie. I can take care of that and help uh, with that as well. Okay. So uh, no problem there. Excellent. Okay. So now I see all that. Okay. So if, if, uh, if we're good to go, I'm going to start here. Let's, let's, let's start this thing. Psychological first aid. Okay, here, let's try this. Perfect. So we did a little bit of an icebreaker already there, so that's good. Uh, now, this is just an overview of the full program. It's a two-day program if you want to do the full two-day course. Day one, the main emphasis is taking care of oneself, self-care, self-care plans, how to listen to yourself, how to do, how to focus on linking up to resources, and, and how do you return to your self-care plan when you go through a crisis event. Day two, how to be there for others, taking care of others, being there for others, how to avoid compassion fatigue. We're going to kind of define that a little bit later. And, um, you know, we're really going to kind of drill into some of that. But the two-day program is quite extensive. It's good. It's flexible. Um, originally, when the program came out, you were only required to have one instructor in the room. As the program standards developed quickly, uh, it was required that two instructors had to be in the room. Um, but what's nice is that there's a flexibility that for Indigenous communities that having an instructor in the room along with uh, um, an elder, a respected elder, can provide the community insight that's needed in formulating how to, to get through a crisis event, a sudden loss, uh, dealing with loss, grief, trauma, stress. As you can see, uh, we're going to discuss a little bit about with regards to psychological first aid as it's a, a before, during, and after exercise. Um, you have to prepare yourself for the inevitability, and I hate to say that, but the inevitability of crisis, how to manage crisis and how to do self-care during the crisis. And once you've gone through the crisis, how to turn it up again, how to build up your resiliency so that the next time something comes up, that you're ready for it. With the loss of my second sibling, I feel that I was able to enact things that, that helped me um, during that exercise. And, and again, it's, it, this is my personal story. It's different for everybody. And this is not a cure all. Um, before I go any further, it's really important that you know that this next little bit of info, it's, um, you know, we're not going to be psychologists or therapists or counselors out of this equation. What we will have is that, that maybe a little bit of, um, a little bit of insight into some information that we need to look in and do a, do some homework. It may be time to do some homework on ourselves because ultimately the reason that on day one we focus on ourselves is that who's number one? We're number one. Uh, during the course, we we do really extensive great things that I feel allow us to enact, you know, our understandings of, you know, once we discuss loss, grief, trauma, stress, when we implement those into real life situations, um, it helps us to kind of muck it out and 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 avoid the you know focus on the do's and don'ts of listening and such. Uh, then, as you can see, we uh, we care for, when we care for others. We need to know what we're looking for. We need to know how to listen, and we know how to do some homework for them, so that we can invariably try to hand them off to uh, others or the professionals. Because I mean, let's be honest. I mean, when somebody's going through something dramatic. Being there in the moment is great. Helping them, listening to them, giving them water, preparing them food, dropping off some food. You know, during this crisis, this COVID-19 thing, it might be a matter of, you know, then doing your best to try to find the resources they need. Is there financial stuff that they're going to be going through that they didn't anticipate? Doing that homework while you're clear-minded is amazing for somebody who's in crisis who doesn't know when their next paycheck is. So... That's going to be how the overview of the course would go in a two day, but we're going to really skim through here. And uh, basically, Katie's going to have to pull out the vaudeville hook to take me off here. I can talk about this 
all the time for a very long time. So um, this little info session, the objectives is, is we're going to focus on uh, how to care for ourselves during times of stress and crisis. We're going to enact and, and kind of dive into the uh, paradigm of the look, listen, link, live. As you can see, it starts with the four L. When I taught this in French, the look, listen, link, live does not translate well. So that was interesting. Um, we're going to kind of get into being there for others in times of crisis and trauma. And we're going to enact that look, listen, link, live in that sense. And we're going to try to begin to develop an understanding of what it means to provide psychological first aid safely. So uh, the question here is, what is psychological first aid? Now, uh, you know, it's kind of a lot of ways to define it. In the student participant manual, if you're ever to take a course, uh, it says here, psychological first aid provides emotional in practical support to individuals, families, or communities who are having difficulty coping. It's about establishing a connection with people in a compassionate manner in order to bring calm and comfort. Now, I bring that up uh, as kind of like a nice detailed way to explain what psychological first aid is. Um, but people have questions right out the gate typically as to, well, okay, well, I've, I've taken a mental health first aid course. Like, what's the difference? Now, I'm going to tell you right up front that if you've ever taken a, a Canadian Mental Health Association course, uh, a mental health first aid, or uh, St. John Ambulance has these types of courses, all kinds of institutions have been running these kinds of similar programs. The difference between uh, psychological first aid by the Canadian Red Cross and uh, mental health first aid, and I'm going to tell you right up front, they complement each other. There's not one that's better than the other. What it is is that it's a different tool. But the difference is, is that while mental health first aid programs teach how to help someone experiencing a mental health emergency, panic attack, they're depressed, um, it, it kind of brings to the forefront these things. The Canadian Red Cross Psychological First Aid is a resiliency-based program for everyone that offers prevention and coping strategies for dealing with different types of stress resulting from various types of trauma. So they're 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 good. They're both equally good. They complement each other. They have similar topics that are discussed. There's an interplay. You know, we can you know they cross paths on different ways. But where this program has more of um, I feel like a flexibility for the simple reason that, you know, before things happened with me personally on, on, the, on the loss of my sisters, um, I felt that I was just, you know, I was kind of plugging away. Things were good. Um, had just gone on a nice trip with my two young children. And, uh, this hit me. It, it was like a donkey punch. It was, I'd never experienced anything that traumatic, uh, because I didn't expect it. I couldn't prepare for it. And so, um, where I feel is that, Psych psychological for aid and the information that's in the program and where um, where you may gain benefit from it is that it allows to have maximum flexibility depending on the circumstance. That's why I feel the program has um, maybe a different leg up on uh, on different types of programs that do similar stuff. Okay, so it's really important to get out the gate that psychological first aid or things that you can do um, can be done before a crisis or traumatic situation. Um, it can be done during a crisis situation, such as as we experience now with our new world order. And it can be done after in terms of a resiliency building exercise to kind of build ourselves up after the thing passes. to just get my PowerPoint to go. As mentioned, um, on the first day, we focus on ourselves. On the second day, we focus on being there for others. Now, being a, being a psychological first aider, um, I say, you know, it's like kind of like a badge. If you can see that, I don't know if my video is on here, but it's like a badge uh, that basically uh, you hold tight. And when somebody is going through something and you notice something and you make yourself available and you start to listen, that... You're there to listen and in some way, shape or form, try to formulate what the plan is. Um, and, you know, invariably, your job is to try to hand them off to somebody who's maybe more expert than you. Um, we're not experts. We're not counselors, therapists and, and therapists out of this thing. What we can do is maybe try to do a good job of like leading the horse to water if, if you know, if using an, uh, maybe an old expression. 
Um, you know, if you're going to do that, your job is to provide, um, you know, try to do basic things, simple things, uh, basic needs, safety, food, water, shelter. Um, my mom, um, she doesn't have her driver's license. Uh, she's, um, she's a little bit sick. And, you know, uh, calling her every day, um, I make supper, I drive over there, I'm trying to, you know, do the social, um, not just, I'll, I'll use the proper word, the um, physical distancing uh, that's being required now as, as a responsible um, um, citizen is, uh, is to just drop off food, call and make sure that her needs are met. And that in and of itself is providing um, support that, that even my mom would need, anybody would need. Providing accurate information. My mom doesn't listen, you know, watch the news very often. So I'm trying to give her like concise kind of CBC related information. Nice and, uh, you know, try to stay away from, um, the, you know, Facebook and the, the 8 million posts that people are, are sending maybe information that is not relevant. Um, and if, if, if there's anything that you can do, connect the people to, uh, um, you know, appropriate resources and connecting them in, uh, you know, Spatially to family, friends, community. I mean, if we use the adage with first aid that 80% of the time you do first aid on people, it's on people you know. 80% of the time that you communicate with people, it's probably people you know. So it, uh, it's something that you can do as a psychological first aid or as a person who, who gets this information uh, that you can do. So we're going to kind of drill into um, um, the look, list, and link, and live um, um, it's, it's a paradigm that if we can follow along, there's a level of simplicity that I feel is important. And, you know, if you, if you ever to take a participant level course or it interests you, um, you know, you get a participant manual, uh, it's like a workbook. You get to actually work through some activities and stuff I won't be able to cover today, but there's actually a little set of cards. And, uh, I don't know if, um, if there's a way for you to do this here, but maybe we'll do it a little later. Is there's a, a like a little set of cards? Um, Katie, can you maybe show everybody this by any chance? Or is that uh, something yes. I can do? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put the link in the chat box for, for the nope. um, page notes because there is an image of those. Um, awesome, perfect, we'll leave it at that. Yeah, yeah we'll leave it with that. Perfect, so um, if, if, if we look at looking and um, using our, you know, uh, your spidey senses and um, noticing stuff, you know, coming about or you notice within yourself that you're not the same, you're, uh, this new COVID-19 uh, situation is really wreaking havoc on people's sense of security, uh, people's sense of routine, and you start noticing things, it's time to listen. It's time to do something about it. And maybe from that point on is not only listen, but actually link up, do something, find resources, do some research, uh, do some homework for yourself. And why? So is that you can get back to living. You can get back to, you know, quote unquote normal. Um, if you can see in this in this uh, this picture here, you can see that living is primary. That's our ultimate goal. Being in a great state of mind, being healthy, happy, way easier said than done. But however, it is probably one of those things we need to emphasize that if we can, th that's where we're trying to aim for. Um, as you can see here, um, that living, if, you, if you're constantly looking and you're saying, yeah, but I'm in pretty good shape, you know, I'm going to maybe get a good night's sleep tonight. The reason is that it kind of returns you back to living. You know, you wake up the next morning, you're refreshed, you've eaten well, great breakfast, you're you know, you're taking medication on time, you're uh, doing physical activity, you're doing all these things. The goal is to stay between living, looking, living, looking. If, however, you've noticed within yourself or you've noticed on others that you care and love that, man, they're going through something. Your, your spidey senses are telling you that this is not right. It's time to listen. We're going to get into kind of the do's and don'ts or the should do, the should avoid type of things when it comes to listening. And and then that kind of, as you can see from li listening, it actually leads to linking. Uh, it, at some point, we need to know our, um, for lack of better words, we need to know what our limitations are, our expertise. And the reason for that is that if we, if we can know that limitation, like it's above our pay grade, 
I need to do some research. I'm going to, I'm going to do some work for this person. I really care for, you know what, for myself, I need to know like where I can apply to get EI or some of these new government programs because my job has been completely, um, it changed. Um, I don't know how I'm going to make my mortgage payment. Um, doing that research will allow you to get back to living. And that's the key uh, to this program. Keeping it simple. If we're looking at ourselves on the first day of the course, watch out for signs of stress within yourself. You should always be looking. We're going to expand on this in a few minutes. Listen to that. If you, what you're noticing is not normal, you know, the quote unquote normal, it's not who you are. This is impacting you, this new situation we're all finding ourselves uh, with around the world. Listen to yourself. It's about self-assessment and awareness. Are the signs telling you to take a break? You know, um, so I heard this this morning. Um, you know, we a lot of people are going to have a lot of time. Um, we're going to have a lot of time on our hands. And this might be the time to finally get back to some of the self-care things that we've kind of neglected over this new and evolving and very fast, speedy world that we live in. If you've noticed a change, listen to that. And what does that, what does that mean? If it, you know what, I'm going to finally deal with that thing. I don't want to deal with, I, I'm going to link up. I'm going to start taking action. I'm going to, based on my self-assessment, I'm going to actually uh, make sure that my needs are met. Um, I'm going to go to a, you know, talk to my doctor. I'm going to make sure I, you know, I, I haven't really been taking those blood pressure pills the way I should. Well, you know what, um, I'm going to, you know, go online and I'm going to, FaceTime with a friend and I'm going to have a coffee with my friend while they have their favorite coffee. Or as my wife uh, just got an invite last night, um, they're going to be doing a little wine thing. They're going to have a, every, all, all her friends are going to kind of connect to this new forum and they're going to basically, uh, they said that uh, men are not allowed and they're going to be in the basement. And there are any number of things that they, you can do to link up and formulate a new way um, so that you can possibly, just possibly, get back to the new normal or get back to a form of living that makes more sense. Your links are the resources within your support systems. An important component of self-care is having ways to decompress after experiencing stress so you can continue living a healthy life. Um, you know, we're, we're going to talk about self-care. This is not, you know, as much as people like, uh, you know, this is not eating chocolate. This is not having a bubble bath. Those are perfectly fine if that's your thing. Self-care is going to bed early, drinking water, eating healthy, getting exercise, doing all those things that maybe you put off. Um, we're going to kind of dive into a little bit of self-care a little bit as we move along. So self-care, um, you know, self-care is that really big monster of a thing that um, people don't necessarily put a lot of emphasis on um maybe i'll just put it out there just in the chat form here but does anybody have a self-care plan like a formal you, something that's been put down on paper um you reevaluate i don't know once a week you add to it oh katie says me excellent i love it dawson uh, humphreys no, lol no um, glad. Yep. Yes. Knows. We've got some yeses. Knows. Um, boy, I really should. Daniel, I'm on your side. Um, it, it, it took me an exceptionally long time to like finally sit down and formulate what was correct and something that I needed to review. I'm going to tell you the amount of comfort that comes along with developing a self-care plan is, um, is worldly better. Um, so then the question is, and I got asked in the last webinar, well, where do I get one? I can send you some information. Katie can formulate and send you something. I'm going to tell you where you go. Go to Dr. Google and type in self-care plan. There are 87 million versions of self-care plans that are out readily available that would suit your needs. There are basic ones. There are um, very detailed formulated ones that you can fill out. I'm going to tell you though, a self-care plan is only as good as you being accountable to it. And that is the critical key. Um, 
but a formal a formal kind of document that you update, upgrade, change, scratch out, throw it in the garbage, restart is so cool and it's helped me extraordinarily. Um, when when I, uh, you know, from from one instance to the other where, you know, I, I, um, I, I, I go through some situations on, uh, you know, in some, there was a per personal health situation that developed. I was able to kind of regroup fairly quickly because I, I knew that I had to regroup on my self-care plan. So let's talk about this. Um, actually, before I go there, self-care plan. Taking care of yourself is an important part of providing psychological first aid. It's as difficult, it is difficult to support someone else if you are not taking care of yourself. Again, why do we focus on ourselves in the first day? Primarily because if we can get a handle on our own selves, build up resiliency, grapple with what are we actually looking for, listening, doing the homework on what we need to do to actually get to um, the point where we can get back to living, if we can grapple with that and have a plan to build up our resiliency, then game, you know, plan number two is then be there for others. I think the critical problem that happens, and I'm fundamentally, I've, I've had this, I've done this forever, was I care. I care for people. I always go and do it for them. I do things for my mom. I was there for my second sister when she had, you know, um, she had took on a high risk lifestyle and I tried to be there and, and tried to reassure her. And when she passed, um, you know, it just, I, I, I had to, I had a plan in place to kind of try to muck it out a little bit. And I was in way better shape the second time around than the first time around. Your self-care plan identifies the support systems you will use to manage stress in order to maintain your physical, mental, and emotional health. Would it be fair to say, and I'll just get you to get your perspective on this, but is it fair to say that if you're clear-minded, piece of paper, glass of wine, coffee, you know, a favorite tea, at night by yourself, a fire, you know, you're outside, whatever it is, and formulating who are your main contacts, who's, who's that friend you haven't talked to in a long time, and, and you write down these things while you're clear-headed, is it easier to do it while you're clear-headed or when you're in the right in the middle of your uh, uh, of your crisis situation? Is it easier to do it before or is it easier to do it in the middle of it? I think we know the answer. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, your self-care plan identifies the support systems we use to manage stress in order to maintain your physical, mental, and emotional health. Um, doing it now, looking online and creating it is going to help you perpetually because you're going to have a go-to clear headed, uh, in a journal. I love that. I've never done a journal. Um, I have a, a friend of mine that does journaling and has found peace with that. That is definitely something that's at your disposal. So if we kind of fast forward, because I only want to make sure that we have enough time to do a lot of things, but if if you've been through a situation, even prior to this, or there's a sudden loss, or you hear some traumatic news, it's it's important to decompress, and it's important to kind of have a few written coping strategies in place so that you have a go-to. Um, it says here on the slide, what do you do on a regular basis to be healthy? Uh, what resources do you have? This is way easier said than done. If people are unable to do certain things when I'm talking, this is not to spite you. For me, I've I've found jogging here. I went this morning. I found it exceptionally liberating. I hadn't done it in in a very long time. I've I've started jogging, and for me, um, uh, it took me an eternity to get the gumption to do it. Uh, some examples uh, for strategies on decompressing or to cope is to rest. We do have more. Um, physical distancing that's required of us. Parks are closing. Resources are being shut down. Uh, being creative at home uh, with kids at home. This is going to be um, sometimes a, um, a challenge, but focusing on your accomplishments and taking time to reflect on your experience. Um, you know, does anybody meditate? Swimming, you know, when the lakes are open, go go for a nice cold swim. Kayaking, puppies, jujitsu, swimming. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, my wife loves, uh, she's got um, like different types of uh, oils, like uh, 
you know, essence kind of things, you know, you roll it on your neck and it feels good. And look at there, you know, Joe, Joe, you know, yoga crafting. My kids are digging painting right now. So uh, walking the dog, that's great. Good for you. I don't have a pet. Anybody who has pets, these are things you can do. Attending peer support online. I think the creativity that people are going to uh, come up with in terms of uh, online resources and, and, um, Snapchatting and whatever else is, is going to keep people company. Um, um, they give you headaches, Emily, those herbal oils. <laughs> well, uh, I enjoy that. Yeah. Okay. Here. So, so to take care of yourself, it's about building resiliency. Um, building it right now, it is crisis mode. We still have to do that. So much easier said than done in many circumstances. We're still mucking it out. How are we going to pay that bill? Get creative. Take a rest. It's time to do the best you can and work on resiliency. Um, you know, building resiliency within yourself is a preventative measure to coping with stress. Resiliency comes from your protective factors such as uh, support systems and your ability to cope with unforeseen circumstances. Building resiliency is critical and something that we spend a lot of time on the first day because, you know, this is about going down on a whiteboard and a team of three when we were doing the course and, and formulating and, and just getting ideas. Like sometimes it's just a matter of talking to other people about this, this information. And then we realize, you know, shoots, I don't, I don't do that. I should probably start doing that. Celebrating relationships you have with those you love. Absolutely cool. Great idea. There are, many ways to approach resiliency. Um, you can see here on this slide, individual factors, community factors, there's relationship factors. Um, sorry, loading a little bit slowly. There we go. Okay. Oh, sorry about that. I'm not sure there. Um, yeah, the, there's cultural factors as well. Um, I, I found this interesting because every, you know, culture has every way of approaching different things. And, uh, you know, uh, with some of the indigenous communities that we've been working with and with offering training, uh, you know, we do a, land, a treaty land acknowledgement. Um, there's a smudge that's done prior to the start of the course. Um, I absolutely love that with the psychological first aid, quite simply, because it, it kind of creates like, um, like an envelope for the classroom. I mean, for some of the PFA instructors or psychological first aid instructors, instructor trainers, I mean, you're, you're developing a charter. Um, you're, you're kind of creating the safe space, but when you do that, those cultural factors, they basically, it, it almost creates a tolerance and it allows for uh, different ide ideologies and beliefs to kind of be in the same room and allows for an openness. And I feel that, uh, you know, resiliency just has so many different uh, flavors that, um, you know, if I leave you all with this, there's one thing I've learned. Um, resiliency is that definite thing that it has to be done every day. And it's extremely, you know, you have to be disciplined and it's it's not easy. I'm, I'm definitely, uh, you know, the, sometimes the pot calling the kettle black here. But um, working on resiliency building will help you for not only yourself and on mental health, wellness and well-being, but it's going to help you to be there for others. Um you know, during this new and interesting time we find our, all ourselves in. Now, there are psychological, emotional, spiritual, personal, professional, and physical factors um, that play into resiliency building. And uh, the course does a good job of allowing us to kind of parse that out, piece that out, get an open-ended discussion so in this webinar format i can't have a hundred and uh how many people you have here a hundred and x 70 people to to, to 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 pipe in but as you can appreciate there are a lot of things in terms of you know journaling or meditation or um setting boundaries and maybe you know um creating safe spaces and exercise that will help to develop that resiliency that we need to move forward. So let's get back to looking, listening, linking, and living. Um, there's, there's, when it comes to day-to-day -day stress or cumulative or extreme or vicarious types of stress, 
Um, there's a tremendous amount of information. And as any of the psychological first aid instructors will attest to, um, this is where we kind of open the floodgates when it comes to uh, preparing ourselves, whether it be for ourselves or how to be there for others going in, um, that they're in need of, of uh, accompaniment or somebody to listen. Um, you know, when it comes to day to day stress, you know, I'll just read from the book here. It's made up of challenges in life that people face daily. This type can be positive, which is motivating, or negative. On the other hand, there's cumulative stress. And cumulative, you know, th this may be common terminology for, other, for some and for others, it's not, but it's, it consists of multiple losses occurring at the same time or directly one after another. It leaves the individual overwhelmed and with no time to process afterwards. It, it exacerbates other problems. And so resiliency building can, in some ways, not always, it can help to kind of mitigate that. Extreme or traumatic stress occurs when we are faced with severe or sudden strain. It may result in an emotional crisis. Um, I found myself in a few um, circumstances where, um, you know, I had some friends reach out. I had some people kind of really nudge me along and I, I went and talked to a psychologist and it allowed me to parse apart some of the feelings I was having because of how extreme and traumatic and cumulative the distress I was having. Um, you know, when I lost my first sister, that was this, that was what I needed on the second time around. I already knew that. And it, it's, it's, I knew I had to talk to somebody. I didn't wait weeks and months. I went right away and I was able to kind of um, have um, a forum, a trusted person in place to allow for that to happen. And again, just way easier said than done, but it's, it's, it's useful. Vicarious or secondary? Um, vicarious or secondary stress is the mental and emotional stress we experience when exposed to the trauma, pain, and fear others have endured. Um, it's self-explanatory in some respects, but as you can tell, um, you know, when you're, when you're there, you might be doing okay, you're mucking it out. And all of a sudden you hear that your best friend or somebody you care for that they own their own business have had to close the doors or are about to go bankrupt or any number of things that, that stress can kind of, um, kind of, you know, it's like a vortex, right? You might get pulled into that and um, having a self-care plan and try to focus on yourself and make sure that your resiliency building exercises are being done. It may help to mitigate some of that. I'm going to skip ahead of this uh, in some respects, but uh, just hopefully to appreciate understanding the, uh, the concepts of loss and grief and trauma and stress are explained at length and the um when we do the course we we take time to develop these quite simply because that what we do then is we create a case and then we kind of apply some of these you know the the, the what would you see if the person was, had suffered a, an extreme or sudden loss and then what we do is we apply our skills that we've learned of looking and listening and list and, and how to link them and, and do research uh for the people that have gone through it. And where that's where I feel the course really flexes its muscles on the second day is it allows you to, to really put into practice some of those skills. It's not just, um, you know, demonstrating and then doing it. It actually requires the class and the participants to really engage in the material. And, uh, you know, that, that's where I feel that there's, um, you know, I just don't have enough time to get into. Caring for others um, is, is a real, um, you know, it's an obligation we may feel. Uh, it's also something that we just do instinctively. We're good people. You know, a great many people on this on this call are good people. I'm pretty sure everybody is. But if you're going to be there for others, it's going to be a matter of, of looking and being aware of what you're noticing. And some of the things we're going to discuss right now, or I'm going to mention right now, is, um, is going to be applicable to yourself as well. What are you looking for? when somebody's in crisis or going through a traumatic event. You're going to look for nonverbal or uh, nonverbal communication. So subtleties, right? It's not obvious sometimes, but you're going to look for basic needs. They're not taking care of themselves, not eating well. Stress signals, you talk to them, they kind of, you know, they 
burst out at you. Um, resiliency or protective factors are just nowhere to be found. They're just not taking care of themselves. These are things you can look for. Um, this slide um, is a little bit out of place, so I'm just going to skip ahead. I do apologize. I will come back to this later if I have a bit of time. I'm going to come to that too. I do apologize, Katie. No, that's that's fine. You do what you yeah. can. It just yeah, no, I uh, yeah, I I didn't upload the right to PowerPoint. That's uh, you know, pandemic. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so what are we looking for? Now, there are reactions to trauma. There are physical. There are cognitive um, signs that you can look for. There are emotional signs. There are behavioral signs. There are spiritual signs. There are interpersonal signs. There are things you're going to notice in others. I'm going to tell you again, you may notice this in yourself during this new and interesting time we find ourselves in that um, will be indicative of, you know what, you need to listen to it. If you notice it, it's time to do something about it. When it comes to physical reactions, when it comes to, you know, you're talking to your friend, they're going through some stuff, they're adapting, they're not adjusting very well to the fact that they, they've been laid off or uh, they don't know when their next paycheck is coming or, um, you know, they, they're, they're scared to go, to go out in the public because, you know, they don't want to, uh, they're at high risk or they're immunocompromised and they don't want to... Um, uh, if 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 they tell you that they're having a real tough time sleeping, uh, you know they're they're always tired. Um, they're completely numb, you know, physically, mentally to what's going on. Uh, they've they tell you they're having panic attacks all the time. They're um, you know fast heart rate. They're having headaches all the time. These are all indicative of their physical ramifications of trauma, stress crisis coming through there are cognitive reactions so things this could be applicable to yourself this could be what the person is telling you when you're listening oh i'm just so confused all the time i'm just totally disoriented of what's happening um for myself things i still work on memory loss you know, um, when you're in crisis, uh, you don't remember what's going on three days ago. You don't remember what happened three days ago. Um, you know, difficulty calculating, just, you know, man, I'll have to, you know, uh, I was going to have breakfast and then I didn't have breakfast. Then I forgot to have breakfast. I mean, maybe it's a bad example, but difficulty in setting priorities. If you notice this within yourself, if you notice this in somebody you care for, um, it's time to listen. It's time to listen and maybe start trying to formulate what the plan is. Here we go. F emotional and behavioral reactions. You're you're trying to concentrate. Okay, uh, you're on this website. You're trying to learn the new government programs on uh, – EI and how to apply and like and, and you just you can't concentrate or <sighs> behavioral reactions alcohol drug are you drinking more than usual you know we can joke all we want about this this is a real thing um withdrawal uh your friend you know all you want to do is just check in on your friend that you care for and they just they're not answering your phone call yet they're online and they're texting people or they're messaging people but they're not answering your phone call Maybe there's a withdrawal, not intentionally to you, but just they can't they can't find themselves talking to people. They just don't want to talk to people. They they they'd rather just be on their phone and they're they're self isolating. Um, more nightmares. They're telling you they're just having uh, there's they're, they're sadness and guilt of why and why is this happening? I can't believe that this this is indicative that there's more to it. Um, uh, just a deep sense of helplessness is is a. Uh, is is in at play and um you know how can you not i mean uh you know a few days ago um, i kind of crashed this past weekend uh, i just i went home i had a difficult i just slept 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 i just needed that rest and um and it was uh kind of you know maybe just uh kind of that that sprint leading up to canceling everything and all that but you know it it led to a helplessness feeling and and now i feel a lot better but I feel that some of the um, 
the resiliency building stuff I had done before kind of helped me to uh, to kind of regroup on that front. As you can see, these slides are also going to be made available. I'll make them available to Katie, um, and uh, we'll just leave it at that there for now. Uh, spiritual reactions. Uh, you know, the 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 some people are 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 grappling with just the fact of not being able to go to church. Um, you know, there might be uh, conversations you're having and like, why I can't believe this is happening. Like, you know, or, you know, there's a deep despair um, when the person is usually always optimistic and, and this, the, it's, this is not them. It, it's maybe up to you to maybe start formulating what that could look like as to how you can be there for them in that moment or at this time. Interpersonal reactions. Uh, obviously, isolation is the new thing here. It's the new, it's the new cool thing to do. Um, it's the new responsible thing to do. But if they're isolating, um, they don't want to take your phone call. They're not answering text messages. You're, and it's setting in um, like a sense of worry for yourself. Um, it, it could be because they're just uh, they're just not there. They're not there. They're not ready to to, to communicate. Um, which might be at, you know, if you can't get a hold of them, you may have to, you know, activate emergency services. If you, you know, at the end of the day, I've always said this is, you know, if you're going to call 911, just understand, call 911 first and figure out the whole financial thing after the fact. I mean, you know, in Manitoba, uh, most of Canada, um, in many jurisdictions, you know, if you call 911 and they don't get transported, there's no charge. You know, sometimes uh, just that health wellness check is what's needed to be done. Um but you know, if if you know, the ambulance actually takes them to the hospital, there's a charge for that, and then so on and so forth. But the point is, is that if you cannot communicate with that person and you're not able to get through, it, those are interpersonal things that they may be going through may require that you either go and drive over, knock on the door, and say, "Hey, like, just want to make sure, you know, love you. Just keep, just I want to keep in touch with you." It might be the, all that you need to do for now. There are special there are groups that require special attention, as you can see on the picture. Uh, there's the disenfranchised, there's the, uh, um, uh, the, there's the youth, there's, um, you know, there's the elderly and so on. Um, there, there's, there's kind of a specificity. There's, uh, um, there's more that we discuss in a course, uh, a full course that, that, that we can keep an eye out for. And then we actually open it up on, on a whiteboard and, and start jotting down ideas so that we kind of get a, um, a, a course working together to, to, to put the, the ideas together. Indicators of trauma in children and adolescents. Um, I'll let everybody just read that, but uh, the ones that are interesting, and I mean, obviously everybody's uh, now kind of homeschooling and you know, everybody's trying to figure out that. I have a five and seven year old. Um, the net benefit I have, my wife is a teacher. Uh, the only problem is, is they're actually asking her to learn a new technology. They're asking her to uh, send resources and keep in touch with 23 students. And she has the kids at home while I'm doing stuff like this and webinars. Yeah, thanks, Katie, for getting me out of the house. But I am going home right after, though. <laughs> um, you know, elementary, irritable, aggressive, withdrawn, sad. Obviously, this is a critical time in an elementary or middle school uh, student's life. And uh, the fact that that interplay, that connection that they were normally doing, they'd go to school classroom, that connectedness that they were having, this is completely different now, especially with the kids that may, you know, have less screen time, don't have phones and such. Um, this could be a really tough time. And so it's a matter of trying to figure out how you get around that. I think creativity, I think the biz, biggest exercise out of everything COVID-19 related is the amount of creativity people are going to come up with on how to deal with um, certain situations. I think uh, keeping your, your your ideas open. Um, there's there's a way around it. That's the way I look at it. Where we're, we're actually getting back to the roots of how to jimmy rig it, how to figure it out using creativity. Okay, so if I if I skip ahead here, um, I and uh, Katie, how much time would I have? Because I know people are going to have to start leaving here. But yeah, um, if I have if seven, eight, have, ten minutes, yeah, five to seven minutes, that would be helpful. Five, so everyone. Knows. 
If you do need to leave, this is recording, so you can catch it up. It'll be on the show notes once I get it downloaded, re-uploaded. But if you have the opportunity to stay, we'll be able to take some questions at the end, and uh, I'll be available to chat as long as anyone wants to. Excellent. Five minutes or less. We're on the tail end of this. So listening, that's the critical part here, is if you're going to notice these things within yourself or someone else, it's a matter of listening. Uh, there are things that you can do. There are things that you, we would like for you to do. There are some things that we would prefer you try to stay away from or to try to avoid. Um, be, if you're going to listen, be present, be calm, leave space for silence, respect what's being said. Let them have their time. If the person is in, in distress, it's okay to listen. Be compassionate. If you're going to talk, keep your tone, be aware of the inflection of the voice, check your understanding. So can you, so if I just understand this correctly, what you're saying is when just doing that, it, it kind of reaffirms to the person that you're actually listening. And that's sometimes huge and kind of taming that, that situation, ensuring that their safety of the person thinks to try to avoid, don't make promises. You know what? You're totally going to get out of this. No problem. It's easier said than done. Try to avoid making those promises, making assumptions, making excuses. Try not to interrupt when somebody is talking, when you're listening. Uh, try to avoid being defensive if they have something to say to you. Um, try to stay calm, take the high road if possible. And try to avoid ignoring concerns for safety because everybody's in their own mindset. They may be um, in fight or flight. And that's that's hard to uh, um, to kind of you know get out of. On the last uh, link here, which I feel is one of the most important, and I'm going to do a few different screen shares, and uh, we're going to have tons of uh, resources at your disposal here. It's it's linking the person. We need to know uh, to the extent of what we're able to do and what we're not able to do. Um, we are not professionals. We're not counselors, therapists, or psychologists. If it's above your pay grade, if you know it's above your pay grade, it's time to do some research. It's t time to do some homework and to try to, you know, lead the horse to water. Again, a bad kind of um, uh, a way to maybe look at it, but try to, for lack of better words, try to hand them off to a resource that can truly help them. Because at the end of the day, we need to get back to living. Um, ultimately, um, they need to get back to living. You need to get back to living and uh, take care of yourself because we need to avoid compassion fatigue at all costs. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to screen share. How do I do this again? Hold on. On the left under the pencil. Say that again. Under the pencil, the sidebar for us. Under the pencil. Hold on here. One moment, of course. I'm... Hold on one moment. Screen share, open in browser. There we go. Um, perfect. Perfect. Okay. Can you um, just can give you us see this? It's loading. Yeah, just we can. Hopefully, you can see that? that box. Can yeah. you guys see that too? That's the pocket guide. Redcross.ca slash self care. I'm going to interject quickly, Christian. So, yeah. This this link I have included in the show notes. Uh, sorry, just yeah. go back to the guide for a second. Yeah. It is included in the show notes, but I tried twice in the last 24 hours to get it to send me the pocket guide. And so I think it's overwhelmed. You guys yeah. can access the pocket guide. We are hosting it on Lakeview Aquatic Consultants. I show you this link in the resources, but we have I've uploaded it as a file so you can all get it from the show notes, yeah. regardless of whether this page is working. Yeah. Okay. So that's great. Uh, that's good to know. I'll send you the PDF and we'll make sure that uh, it's taken care of. Document. So sorry, I've already got a couple of emails about this question. The pocket guide is a public facing document for anyone. So we are not in violation of program delivery to share the pocket guide. It is a free resource for any person on the internet. So yes. Absolutely. You can request. So what I will explain with this is that this is a 20 to 25 minute read and encapsulates the psychological first aid program. Um, I'm going to tell you that it's wonderful. It has um, two self-stress assessments that require you to be honest. And if you're honest uh, and you score it honestly, it will give you a very good insight into where you stand on 
okay, you know what? I think there's a little bit of work I need to do on the resiliency building exercise. I think there's a bit of work for me to do on the uh, self-care plan uh, development on myself, on the updating of my current plan. I think it's time to journal here because, yeah, I didn't realize I was that low. I thought I was okay, but realizing you have to be honest if you're going to go through this this uh, mental health mini guide. Um, the, uh, the, the aspect that I'm going to finish on, and I think it's important, I'm going to leave you with one last thing at the end, is for those in Canada, uh, our American counterparts, I am unsure of an equivalent. I actually plan on looking. Go ahead. Sorry, if you in your drop down menu, click Manitoba, you'll see there's a US drop down in the menu. Right there. Good. There you go. I usually go to the MB1 auto automatically. So thank you for doing that. I appreciate that. So um, for those in Ontario or th th uh, those in Manitoba, you can see that each province uh, through the United Way uh, of Canada, it basically has uh, their front facing government, um, government kind of, I mean, where do you go? to find resources or to link up or to find resources. A great many people will say Google, they'll say Yahoo, they'll look online. There's nothing wrong with that. I think the difference, however, is that you're going to get everything. You're going to get people trying to sell you stuff. You're going to have your banner ads. You're going to have your AdWords uh, ads at the top of the page. I think what's nice about uh, 211.ca and then picking the province is that this allows you max flexibility that if you have a family member in Ontario, you're from Alberta, it'll allow you to maybe do some research and kind of find resources for your um, for your family member and, and be able to have a, a current set of, uh, of available government agencies that the, that the person we need. I'm gonna to go to the Manitoba website just because I'm very familiar with it. But as you can see here, there's a COVID-19 info, which is new, this was just recently put on. Um, which I found was exceptionally good because in Manitoba, Health Links, the 1 800 number, um, allows for people to even text in. Like if I go to Health Links here for a split second, it actually allows for people to text in and actually get information from an actual person that can help. Um, you know, there's uh, you know a lot of questions on. Uh, on like the financial stuff, uh, on the Health Agency of Canada, COVID information, their information lines, um, frequently asked questions. Like, this is great. I think kids help phone. This is great because if I go here, it's if you go to the website, it actually shows like kids can text in and get help and get maybe, you know, help when they find it difficult to talk to an adult about. Um, the other thing that I want to make sure of is that you, that you can appreciate is that if you punch in, like I'm going to look here at mental health and addictions. This is just another one that I found was extremely useful. It's as simple as adding the your postal code, um, R5A0A5. Uh, there we go. I'm going to use mine. And let's say child mental health and, you know, counseling, let's say. And I need to know the closest organizations where I live, bam, it actually creates like a custom, you know, all government agencies, delivery of psychological service center at Fort Gary. This is through the University of Manitoba. It's 13 and a half kilometers away. Um, I can, do you know what I mean? Like, so the, this is one of those, those places where, I mean, if I wanted to click into this counseling service, the website, hours of operation, now everything's probably changed with COVID, but my understanding, you can print the page, you can actually save it as a PDF, you could send it to somebody you care. The next time you get it, you drop off their meal, you could drop off this information and they can call themselves. You know, there's unlimited potential with 211.ca. And I feel that that's like kind of the crux of linking the, or, the, or the crux of the psychological first aid course is that, at the end of the day, being aware, looking, seeing that there's a problem, it's time to listen. The course, we spend time on how to listen, what you should and should try to avoid when it comes to listening. But ultimately, the game plan is link the person. And the reason for that is that there's, we need to know our limitations. We are not psychologists or therapists or counselors, unless you are on this call. Um, but it's just so that ultimately they can get back to living or uh, develop a sense of normalcy. And it allows you kind of like an off ramp for lack of better words, is that you can then lick your wounds, pick up the pieces from that effect that you've had that, that uh, secondary stress that may have developed and then getting back to your self care plan that you've worked really hard that you're going to start working on, right? All 170 of you to make sure that you take care of yourself. So, 
2on1.ca, uh, there's the United States. Uh, that's great. I'm actually going to take a quick look and see what that could look like. Look at that. 2on1.ca, 2on1.org. Bang. I'm going to leave it at that. Okay. So um, I just want to wrap up on one last thing. If anybody is interested, and that is the wrong page, so I will apologize right here. Can you still see the screen there, Katie? Uh, psychological first aid provider group. group. Perfect. That, that's yes, the that's the one. Now, I, uh, I'm one of three people that provide information on um, this uh, Facebook page. If you're a psychological first aid instructor, there's a psychological first aid instructor page as well. I, I do vet people that are psychological first aid instructors on that other one because there's different information. But, um, you know, access to the guide, you know, tips to help families cope during self-isolation. Like we provide um, this kind of, of, you know, useful information that you can in turn turn around and maybe help on your resiliency front. I've always focused on resiliency um, when it comes to um, uploading information. And so uh, in that sense, um, you know, you may find it interesting. If you come and look for me on Facebook, I'm going to accept you, no questions asked, and you're going to be more than welcome to uh, to uh, just have another resource, another level of linking, a daily update of different types of stuff. So um, I think, uh, let's see here. So let's go back to... I do apologize. One moment. I promise this and the mini guide. So this is the mini guide that is going to be made available to you. Um, as you're going to see here, there's uh, it's a very quaint little pocket book. Um, I don't know. Can you show my video? Is everybody can see my video? It's, it's, it's about that size. Yeah, if everybody can see that. So um, as you can see, 2on1.ca or 2on1 uh, as a whole, you can actually call it. Uh, the Kids and Teens Health Forum, it's all there. Canadian Mental Health Association um, links. Uh, what is psychological first aid? Um, the cycle, self-care. Now, this is uh, that self-care plan. Um, that Those self-stress assessments I was mentioning, how to score it. If you have to be honest, though. Uh, but if you uh, can kind of filter through this, print it uh, two per page kind of thing, you can. It's fairly um, uh, concise. It gives a nice breakdown of how to be there for others. Gets into some of the grief, loss, um, stress, and um, crisis information. Okay. So that, uh, in, some, in many respects, kind of puts it to. Uh, to an end there. Uh, thank you for sticking around. Sorry for going long, but um, you know, Katie's going to keep in mind uh, is going to or going to get in touch with me if there's any uh, particular interest, and uh, we're he we're here to provide any resources that you come up with. Yeah. So thank you, Christian. Thank you so much for that session. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Hopefully. Okay. So um, do you want to just turn your screen sharing off, Christian, so that we can uh, see they can see? Perfect. Got it. Okay. Um, so, uh, just want to make some brief announcements and then we'll take some questions. So if those of you that need to get out of the hot seat, so, uh, thanks for joining us. Everything will be up on the show notes page. That website is live in the chat box. As soon as I can download and then re-upload the video to YouTube, I will get that up realistically later today or tomorrow. I uh, just want to give you guys a heads up as well. So, uh, Aquatics Tribe, Alive Solutions, they do have an aquatic, uh, their crisis connection webinar tomorrow. That is also in the show notes. It is at 10 a.m. Pacific if you want to join that. Also uh, recently announced this afternoon, the Redwoods Group, which is the insurance company, Crum and Forster, but they do their annual aquatics um, kind of discussion. Last year, Joey Rusnak was on that session. They're actually holding a meeting at 1 p.m. today, so in 45 minutes. That link is also in the show notes if you want to jump on that webinar. I know I'm planning to join. It's on Zoom. I'm not sure what topics are planned, but it is a free webinar, a Zoom meeting for the Redwoods group. Um, also, a couple things just to mention. Coming up on Friday, we do have Brent Miller from Automated Aquatics Canada. He will be talking on how to strategize to reopen your pool at the end of all of this. We don't know if that's two weeks. We don't know if that's two months. Uh, Brent's worked in the aquatic.
some pools will be okay. Some pools are circulating. Some pools are going to run out of chlorine. Some pools are going to lose power. So we really need to plan for this when we're programming. It's not going to be just uh, after a fecal where we just wrap it and start back up. So that's coming up on Friday. Monday is Rishona uh, Hyman Aqua Essence. She'll be talking programming. The complete webinar schedule, all free, is online. So please have a look at that. Pre-register if you can. It helps us plan when we know if we're going to have 100, 200. Uh, we had 240 registered today. So thank you to all of you who came. And, and thank you so far to the internet gods. We've got this figured out, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the other last thing I wanted to say in relation to upcoming webinars, so I loved how Christian talked about the accountability to the self-care plan. So make it your goal tonight or now to, to develop that self-care plan and keep working on it. Don't make it a big to-do, just jot some stuff down, find a template, get it done. And you're starting to wonder, how am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to pay my mortgage? I've been laid off or I, I don't know if I'll be laid off. Uh, we do have a session coming up in two weeks. Benjamin Zimmerman from BC Aquatics and First Aid in Toronto. He started his own affiliate. He does teaching off the pool deck as well as on the pool deck in dental offices, doctor's offices, and family homes, private residences. And the focus of his session will be the gig economy. So really just want to inspire you guys moving forward. The same with the way I felt the need to do these webinars. It's 2020. The internet is is really how you can do your business. Yes, we're missing a pool, but we have community, we have connection. What can you do for you as a person, not just your facility, your affiliate, um, to, to, you know, how can you make the most of this financially? So don't let that stress you out too much. If you have the opportunity to stay, we'll see if there's any questions for Christian. We'll pop those in the chat box. Yeah, Anybody have questions? Show notes, Heather, are in the Lakeview link. I'll repost it now. So the show notes are live, but they will get further updated. So they're missing, obviously, the video. So show notes, I'm going to plug in now. Whoops. And just as uh, if you're interested in knowing a bit more about the, the start of the program, I had put um, – I, I, I put the link in in the, uh, the chat box there, but it's just uh, – it kind of – um, it was a CBC kind of uh, article slash uh, video of, of, you know, why we came up with the program where, you know, the involvement and it explains a little more about my, uh, my kind of journey to, to help on this, uh, on this little adventure we have here. So if you're interested, go to that, that article, it's just gives you some insight as to where this kind of all started. If you're interested. Yeah, any questions? We've got Christian here. I'm sure he's happy to answer questions either about what he does or the program or, um, yeah, what's the process for becoming a PFAI? What's the process? So um, yeah. it's very straightforward. Um, so there's two avenues. If you're a Canadian Red Cross instructor already, a first aid instructor, what it'll require you to do is take the two-day uh, psychological first aid course or a blended course, which would mean you'd need access to the two online caring for self and caring for others, which I completely forgot to mention today. So that's totally unfortunate. There is There are two online courses that are available um, online, but I can, uh, I'll try to, I'll show you the link here in a second. But basically if, if you if you do the blended, you need to do the two online courses complete the psychological first aid course. And then if you're an instructor already, you basically need to take uh, the psychological first aid instructor course, which is two days. You need to be monitored uh, as per usual. If you're right from scratch, you're a, a person that can see value and maybe becoming a Canadian Red Cross instructor, easy in five days, um, two day psychological first aid course, you need to take uh, something we called uh, the fundamentals of instruction. And then basically, uh, that's kind of like a one, it's technically two days, but we integrate it into the uh, psychological first aid instructor as well. So from a Monday to Friday, you can get everything you need. So is that basically you have to turn around and and start teach? Well, you'd have to become, you'd have to be monitored. You'd have to be monitored. Um, we'd actually have to know that you're doing a good job. You'd be written up. Uh, you'd have to be monitored by either a training experience supervisor or an instructor trainer, such as myself or Craig. 
So one of the links I just put in the chat box talks about oh, the- I, um, I can answer Marilyn's question. What if you're an, uh, I'm assuming it's Life Saving Society. If you're an FAI for a Life Saving Society, you're basically, um, you can be transferred in some way, shape or form. Don't, uh, Craig Bremner is the absolute expert on, he could work with that, but basically there is a way to transfer you and, and transition you where we, uh, we give you uh, credit for the fact that you're an instructor already and you can kind of skip ahead a little bit. But, um, you know, if you're in Manitoba, we can help you. If you're uh, out of province, uh, I can maybe line you up with maybe a provincial rep. So, um, you know, I don't know if you want to give access to my email to some of these people who have those kinds of questions, but uh, just let me know, Katie. Yeah, if you're comfortable, I can pop your email in yeah. the chat box. Yeah. And it looks Absolutely. like yeah, I got Redwoods could be tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, guys. Redwoods is tomorrow. Um, we'll pop Christian's email in the chat box in a moment. Uh, I am an LSS first aid instructor when I went through the process, similar to what Christian is describing. So there was credit for being an FAI, but I still needed to go through the uh, the leadership development program of the Red Cross program. So it was just two days for me after I held the award. Or no, excuse me, I'm confusing you. I, we did the award one day and we did co-teaching together. So it will depend on your, your province reach out to your first aid rep if you're a Canadian Red Cross affiliate. If you do not know who your rep is, stay on the line with me, send me a chat and we will find your first aid rep or Dan will find your first aid rep. I've, I've delegated Dan to work on that. So if you need that contact. Uh, other questions? Oh, the Redwoods training link is in the show notes as well. I was super organized this morning. So go down to the discussion portion of the show notes you'll see it under the Aqua Essence uh, headbands. Uh, yeah, above the Aqua Essence headbands. It's maybe the fourth link under links and sources discussed. Other questions for Christian while we've got him on the hook? The vaudeville hook is coming now. <laughs> I was gonna say we still have 86 people, so you should start, we should start a song yeah. and dance. Do you no, guys want to? No. I did pop in some poll questions, so why don't I start those? Yeah. If they were meant at the beginning, but just kind of see where we're at, because we've still got some people, and that allows us to try see what that's like. Oh, we've dropped to 28. Oh, no, 87. <laughs> so if you can see the uh, question on your screen, it's anonymous vote. We don't see what the who you are. Just let us know that the survey works. Just gives us an idea as a as a engagement tool. So a lot of changes daily, right? So it depends on the day, right? And and I know for me it depends who I'm around. So my husband was in the army, the US Army for 20 years. So he's, you know, we're prepped. We have enough food for six months. We've got all kinds of medical things that we don't need. And his level of stress is higher than mine. So when we're home together, it makes me stressed. So the good news about these webinars is I'm like, okay, bye, honey. I'll be gone for three hours. So that's that's nice. Uh, he still works. Uh, he's, he's essential. So he does go out of the house a little bit. And I'm self-isolating because if he gets it, I'm going to get it. Let's move on to the next question. Oh, you guys are doing them all simultaneously. Okay, this is what happens when I preload them all. So let me scroll so you guys can see the results. Can you see the results right no. now? No. Okay, perfect. So uh, lots of people are providing emotional support, physical support. Uh, that's really, really tough, right? The longer this goes, medical conditions. Can you show oh. the results? I thought they could see the results. Let me end the voting so that we can see them. Yes. Thank you, guys. Let me share the results now. Beautiful. Now we're, co now we're cooking. Can you see the results now? Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so starting with question one, I'm under a lot of stress right now, so I was speaking to it changing, right? It sounds like it's changing daily for people, right? So daily, taking it day by day, like Christian said, every day is not the same day. Don't worry about yesterday. Don't worry about tomorrow. Just focus on today. What are you going to do to make today work? I saw something really great on Instagram a few days ago. It said, um, uh, what, what are you going to take from this experience? Or what is the virus going to take from you? Right? Which it, it you know, that's a very specific philosophy. But for me on that day was very, very constructive to hear. 
Um, so I'm providing emotional, physical, or financial support to family members and colleagues. So that's a lot of people, right? 44% of our respondents. And that's probably going to increase, unfortunately. The longer uh, for the Americans, when we kept referring to EI, EI is our welfare. So what you get financially when you're out of work. And so that's going to change the more people are laid off, the more, um, you know, the less money there is to go around, the less our programs are closed our facilities are closed and programs don't run. So one of the things not to frighten people, but I've said to people I've been speaking to is, have you considered that your summer programming may be at 50% capacity instead of 90% capacity? So you're hiring young guards for a full summer of, of lessons, but then maybe the lessons don't fill and you cannot staff the full capacity. So it's a, the beginning, only the tip of a very long road, unfortunately. So I'm worried about the future, almost 40% of people. Uh, it's hard to know where we're going. I feel isolated. So very low isolation, which is nice. We're all connecting. And that was the comment I put in the chat box. So um, yes, social distancing, we can call it that. I really like what you said, Christian, the physical distancing, because we are physically in different provinces, but we're socially connected right now on this webinar. Yeah. We can socially yeah, and that's, connect. And that's terminology that, I, that has kind of just come up and popped up in the past. We, that, you know, the politicians, they don't want us to not be socially distant from each other. They just need us to be physically distant. And there's a massive difference there. And so I like how they've uh, kind of, pivoted a little bit and made sure that we we understand like keep in touch with the people just stay apart from each other that's all we want like that, that's all they that we need to be doing and we're going to do our part here so yeah i totally agree because i think and it depends on the person like i as i i identify as a highly sensitive person or like a sensory processing sensitivity and so i i'm best in small groups individual one-on-one -on -one, whereas other people love uh you know big engagement Oh, we lost our poll. Oh. <laughs> you killed no. our poll. Nope. That's okay. That's my, bad. that's my bad. I was trying something here. I was just playing here. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. I don't know if I can pull it back. Let me just see if it lets me share the results or if it's, oh, yeah, here we are. Okay. So isolation. And then there's a comment in the chat in the chat box that there's only a 50% response rate. So you're right. It could very much be higher. People are unwilling to commit. Um, Sorry, number five, it's been difficult to create a new routine at home or social distancing. So that one's a difficult question. And the people I've been talking to, friends from growing up, we all have different jobs. So I work in aquatics, one is a civil engineer, one works for immigration, one works for the government, uh, one works for a lawyer. The amount or degree to which we can work from home is very different depending on the nature of the work that we do, on the nature of our household sit setup the physical structure, the space, our routines. And so I know it's been very difficult for some of the people I've chatted with that they don't have a space, right? They don't have a table. They don't have, you know, kids not underfoot. So that can be a challenge. So, so yeah, um, good to hear from you guys. Do you want to pull up that blog post, Christian, the why you should do it? I think that's helpful for people to see now. Yeah, okay. Hold on, I'm doing this right as we speak. Right here. The good news is we're so much more adept at the tech than we were on Monday, Christian. You missed eight minutes of awkward silence while I couldn't get microphones to work. Ah, sounds like fun. So this yeah. is uh, Don Marantet. He's the guy, he's the he's the the big kahuna. He's the, uh, the kind of visionary for this uh, training and um, you know, I, I have a great deal of respect for him because he he um, he he saw that the the need for us to have a different set of tools, um, a frontline set of tools that we could help with with people that we care, and uh, so this is it's, there's a bit of me in here. This is a, this is the the first course that was delivered out in Ottawa um, about almost a year and a half ago now. So actually, maybe a little longer than that. Yeah. So yeah. That's it is deal. a new program in Canada. So if you're in aquatics in Canada and you haven't heard about this program, you're not living under a rock. It is a relatively new program and the rollout has been very specific. So I know initially in Alberta, it was very much geared towards existing instructors and trainers. So if you haven't heard about it, it's okay. We've tried to collect the resources in the um, show notes. So maybe I will attempt to screen share just to show you guys the show notes. 
I've got them pulled up. Maybe, maybe not. Can you see it? No, I think I've lost it. Uh, now I've jinxed it. I said all that, now I've jinxed it. Can you guys see anything? Can you see me? No. No, I'm going to, I'll stop sharing for now, sorry, because I couldn't get it to work. But essentially, the show notes have all the links that, um, I also don't think my computer can handle that many windows. Uh, all of the links that um, Christian has talked about are in the show notes. Okay, so um, if, if there's anything that else that comes up or any ideas uh, pop up, just please feel free to get in touch with Katie and uh, you know, we'll uh, we'll do what we can to get slides and whatever else you need. Because quite honestly, my uh, main out of all of this, my main goal was to uh, um, promote the idea that psychological first aid is uh, is it's my baby right now. I'm I'm totally digging it. <laughs> I haven't been teaching any first aid lately. I've been focusing 110 percent on this. So if there's uh, any interest in becoming an instructor and uh, promoting the material and promoting the discussion, uh, please read that little mini guide, go online and, uh, you know, get in touch. We can uh, try to line you up with provincial reps accordingly. And uh, if it's Manitoba, I can help you. And we can, uh, we can um, really make a difference here. I think this is crucial at this point. Uh, there's some online courses that are available as well. So in that sense, if, uh, if there's anything that you'd like uh, to look at for that, we're uh, I, I'm making a pitch to the Red Cross to make them available for free. So I've been pushing the the higher ups with uh, pocketbooks and and uh, with the with the pens in their hands, I can make these kinds of decisions. And I'm hoping to get some news soon. Uh, Chris is asking about provincial links to providers. What provincial links do you mean? Are you thinking like uh, like affiliate links or I'm not well, clear if you can imagine if you can imagine every province has um, you know a provincial um, you know point people I call you know Michelle uh, who's my boss here in, in in Manitoba for the Canadian Red Cross there's a provincial reps so every province yeah. has a provincial rep there um, if you can imagine the Canadian Red Cross doesn't teach uh, first aid or psychological first aid directly. It's all through uh, training partners. And so I'm a training partner. We're also an instructor development center, but um, provincial reps will be able to line you up with uh, somebody in your area that they trust, that they work with. You know, I mean, there are some people that th they do first aid and they just do it on the side. They do it once a year, right? However, they may be able to line you up with somebody who's really adept and can help you to develop your, you know, if your interest in, in offering this type of training or something to that effect. So. Yeah, I think what I'll do. So Chris, if you're looking for your rep or anybody who's still on the call or watching this video is looking for their rep, if you can email it's Katie at Lakeview Aquatic Consultants. Put it in the chat box so you can use our contact form. I will connect you with a first aid rep who can give you that information. I don't want to end up with every single reps, uh, you know, their information is public as a rep, but we don't need to have every single one in the chat box. Yeah. So let me know if you need or what province or zone you're in and we'll get you connected. Yeah, especially, or if you're not, let's say you're not an affiliate, but you're interested in becoming an affiliate, the same process will apply, connecting you with the local person or the contact center, the phone center will be able to provide that information. Other questions for Christian or myself about psychological first aid or life, I suppose, at this point. We've entered the cocktail hour at noon. Paula said uh, that'd be nice to have an awesome free courses and that would help. I'm like, I can tell you with certainty, Katie, uh, I'm, I'm trying with everything I've got. <laughs> I think it's, a, it's, you know, there's, there's a lot going on right now in the world. And I think there's a lot of moving parts and people are scrambling to, Especially with the Canadian Red Cross, they have disaster management and and Respect Ed and all these organizations on the on the inside that are 
you know, flexing their muscles and getting help from the federal government to do their part. And so, um, you know, this is just another thing that I think they, they're, they're working on. So. Well, and I think the other thing too, to the discussion and the point that you made Christian about the immediacy of the crisis or whether it's cumulative or long-term, I mean, there will be maybe people who will feel this acutely six, eight, 10 months from now. So for example, I worked in the town of High River in Alberta for a few years, and that was a place that in 2013 experienced a major traumatic flood. And when I started working in this town four years later in 2016 and onwards, there were still residents and ratepayers and customers I would interact with that were still, they had either unresolved trauma or they were still experiencing acutely being uh, resettled or losing their home. And so there are people for whom, yeah, they, they may be okay now, but they may lose it on the back end of this, right? Or they may, when they have to go back to work and deal with customers and teach lessons and act like everything is okay when it's not at home or in their personal life, right? Um, so Corey's asking, does the 90 minute course on the website have a fee associated with it? So which specific course would be helpful? Oh, for I, I can, uh, I'm gonna, I'll steal your please. screen. I can show you. Um, yeah, please. Give me one second. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. One split second. I promise. You're better than me. If my computer couldn't handle it. <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 we're, we're good here, we're good. Uh, it's not this one. I'm gonna have to try something, give me a second. Uh, yeah, something's moving. So if you're in Canada, um, if you go to the Canadian Red Cross website, myrc.redcross.ca, so basically right here, if you're looking for the online course, you can do this on your own. Uh, but I'm looking for uh, uh, psychological first aid and you're looking for psychological first aid and you're do you want to do it in English. Um, and you're looking for all delivery methods uh, within and it, it you can punch in your area code. It should be able to, if, if you don't have any uh, cookies or anything. What am I missing here? Uh, online. Oh, there we go. Okay, you actually have to uh, Okay. Yeah. So right here, so psychological first aid for caring for self and caring for others. Right now, the Red Cross is direct delivering it for 15 bucks. Like I said, I'm working to um, convince the, the powers that be. So I'm going to try to see if I can. So I would expect that anybody can take that regardless of IP address. Like I, I would imagine that if it's a direct delivery from the Red Cross, if I'm in Arizona, if I'm in Swaziland, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an online course it's, that is still bad. Yeah. Yeah, it should take this course. Yeah, like you can read up on it as well. Um, give a second. Do, do, do. It's having a hard time here. There you go. So basically it explains the course as a fact sheet, and then you can register for the course. So, um, you know, it's it's, it's myrc.redcross.ca. That's what matters. And it'll take you to where you need to be. If you're in Canada, and I like I said, yeah, you if .ca should probably be able to redirect you if if you're out of country. And I know there's been a lot of questions about the American Red Cross, and unfortunately, I don't have a lot of information. This is one of those rare times when you'd think that Red Cross would be the same and interconnected, and they're really not Canada to the U.S. Oh, so it's an animal. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If somebody knows somebody with the American Red Cross, I'm happy to get on a phone call and try and figure out you know, if they have a comparable program or if you have a contact, somebody has a contact, they can share it with us. We can have a quick conversation by email and we'll, or any other resources. There were a few shared mental health first aid America. I put on the resource page, any other courses you guys have taken, whether it's psychological first aid or even Christian started off talking about the difference between psychological first aid and mental health first aid. There are yeah. people who spend, you know, 40, 80 hours becoming mental health first aid caregivers. Th those are all good resources to share. So if you've taken a course, whether online or paid through an organization that you think would be valuable to any aquatics professional who's gonna watch this webinar in posterity, shoot it in the chat box or send me an email. I'll add it to the links and show notes. I think it's a great resource, you know, now, a year from now, 
you might have too much going on and you say, okay, I loved Christian's presentation. I just, I don't have the brain power right now. I know it's a problem. I'm going to do my self care plan and I'm going to put this on, on the back burner for a while. That's fine. I mean, you got to know your limits, right? You got to know day to day. What can I do today for me? What can I do today for my family? What's achievable, right? We, we have all this free time, but it's not really free time, right? We, we still have things we need to do and the brain power that it takes to get through a day of uncertainty is a lot different than, you know, just going to work, picking up the kids, going home, making dinner, right? So give yourself some grace, especially in the next couple of weeks, right? Like you're here, you attended the webinar, you did something for you today, but don't feel like we're giving you tons of homework. You have to go, you have to go become a PFAI, like, no, do it, for yourself. do it for yourself. I mean, at the end of the day, the biggest thing that I learned out of this exercise is that there, we are important. We have to really focus on ourselves sometimes. And if you can fit it in, how you just prioritize it and add some, you know, and uh, and you have an accountability coach like uh, like I've actually brought on for uh, myself on the business end of things. Uh, this is one of those things that's been helping me to, to you know, to stay healthy and, and, to, and to continue to grow. So. Any other questions? We've still got some people on the line. Anybody with connection they want to make uh, questions for me, questions for Christian, anybody, questions for the group that you want me to put into the, like, speak out loud. Um, so Angela is going to share this with her mentoring group, mentoring project, volunteering time. I think that's great. Um, I also hope the American Red Cross has a program where they have something that we can share with you. I just don't know what it is. I okay. just looked and I couldn't find anything, but uh, I'm going to have to drill a little bit deeper. Yeah. So if anybody hears of anything, please let us know. Okay. Thank you so much, yeah. Katie. Have a great day and uh, we'll talk after. Okay. And if anybody needs anything, uh, we'll see some of you on Friday. We'll see some of you tomorrow, maybe in the Redwoods call or the Aquatics Tribe call. Uh, you can head off Christian, I'll, I'll hang out for a few minutes if anybody needs anything. Um, I'm here, happy to answer questions. Have a great rest of your day, take some time for yourself, get out and exercise if you can, move your body, that really helps if, if you know, sitting on the couch is only good for so long. So if you need anything, I'm here. Thanks everyone, take care, bye-bye. I'm going to stop. I think everyone's gone, so I'm going to.